Chapter 5, Atmospheric Structure and Radiation Transfer. Section 5.4, Absorption, Reflection, and Scattering. So far, we've talked about um, the radiation from the sun um, as being potential. Uh, the reason why we do, th do this is because uh, as this radiation passes through our atmosphere, um, it's modified. Um, uh, some of it is sent back to space, uh, some of it is absorbed uh, at, it within the atmosphere. Uh, so what I want to talk about is, is three atmospheric processes, uh, absorption, reflection, and scattering. And these processes act on sunlight um, as it moves through the atmosphere. And this interaction uh, occurs with gas, uh, gas molecules and suspended particles. That are found uh, normally in the atmosphere. The first process is called scattering and scattering occurs when small particles and gas molecules diffuse part of the incoming radiation. What diffuse means is when the uh, radiation strikes the particle it's sent off into uh, sent off in a random direction. Um, this process doesn't alter um, the quality or wavelength of this energy. Now, because it's sent off in random, uh, the radiation is sent off in, in a random direction, uh, some of it is scattered back to space. Uh, the amount of scattering that takes place is dependent upon two factors, uh, the wavelength of the incoming radiation and the, sky, and the size of the scattering um, particle or gas molecule. So here this, this uh, uh, diagram represents the process of scattering. Um, so we see that, that the direction that, that the radiation is sent off in is random. Now in our atmosphere we have an, uh, an abundance of particles that have a size of about 0.5 microns. And the type of scattering that takes place um, is a function of the wavelength of the radiation and the size of the particle. Um, the reason why our sky looks blue is because that's the particular particular wavelength that is uh, preferentially scattered by these 0 0.5 um, uh, micrometer particles. If there was no scattering taking place in our atmosphere um, the, uh, during the day the sky would appear black. And, and this is what happens um, if you were on the moon. So here we see uh, a picture uh, from uh, just above the moon's surface of the earth and we can, we can see the moon's sky is black. Now uh, scattering in the atmosphere is not always uh, in, in the blue wavelength. Uh, early in the morning and particularly um, before sunset, uh, the sun's rays uh, pass through uh, uh, a, a sort of um, more of the atmosphere and lower down in the atmosphere we have uh, a larger or, or a greater abundance of larger particles and this is the reason why we see the sky suddenly become uh, orange or red in color as in this uh, photograph where the sun is, is now dipping uh, below uh, the horizon. When there's a lot of uh, water droplets in the atmosphere the scattering that will take place is all is um, in all wavelengths and it results in a white color being created or a white haze and, and here we have a picture um, from Victoria's Harbor uh, on a day when there was a lot of uh, water droplets in the atmosphere and we can see the scattering is white colored producing a haze or, or sometimes called fog. Now some gases and particles in the atmosphere have the ability to absorb incoming radiation. So what this means is that the, the, the radiation uh, is actually being absorbed by, by um, the atoms and molecules in, in the particle and this absorption process sh it will create heat energy. Um, so uh, absorption we know is defined as a process where solar radiation is retained by substance and converted into heat energy. Um, We've already talked about the um, ozone layer in the atmosphere. Uh, here we have ozone uh, gas molecules that uh, 
specifically absorb ultraviolet uh, wavelengths from the sun and produce heat energy, making the, the stratosphere warmer than the uh, air beneath it. Um, now, the creation of heat energy, um, it just doesn't stop there. When the particle heats up, it then begins emitting its own radiation. And that radiation that's emitted is going to be a function of the temperature of the object. Uh, those objects in, in the atmosphere are, are, aren't as warm as the sun. They're much cooler, and they will uh, emit long-wave radiations. So here we, we have um, um, a diagram describing uh, this process of atmospheric absorption. Insulation is absorbed by the particle. It heats up, and then it starts emitting long-wave emission. Uh, the final thing that can occur in the atmosphere as, as the solar beam is passing through it is that this radiation can be reflected. Now, now reflection means that it is sent back, uh, redirected uh, 180 degrees uh, uh, back in, in, in the direction where, where the radiation came from. Um, reflection causes a 100% loss of insulation. Um, the most uh, effective uh, reflectors in our atmosphere are clouds, especially clouds that are composed of um, frozen water or ice crystals because they are definitely uh, a, a whiter in color than, 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 than uh, liquid particles. Um, so high level clouds that are composed of, of ice particles uh, are, are more reflective than low level clouds that have more water uh, droplets in them. So here uh, we can see this process, insulation coming in, and then it's sent back uh, in, in, uh, in the opposite direction, 180 degrees back to, to space. Um, if, if we looked at uh, the Earth um, via a, uh, with a satellite, uh, we would see that there are uh, um, areas of, of white, uh, and, and those are clouds. So here we can see various clouds uh, in the atmosphere uh, reflecting uh, the radiation back to space and appearing white in color. Now, uh, the word transmission is used to describe any insulation that has uh, been able to pass through the atmosphere without being absorbed, uh, reflected, or backscattered. Um, transmission um, has been reduced um, in the last hundred years uh, due to human activities. Uh, um, especially after World War II, up until um, the mid-late uh, 70s, there was an, uh, an obvious reduction in the amount of uh, solar radiation that was being received at the Earth's surface. And scientists called this uh, global dimming. Uh, things have improved into the 80s, 90s, and, and, and so on, and that's because of, of environmental laws that reduce the uh, number of particles that we're uh, putting into the atmosphere. Uh, transmission can also be reduced by natural fa factors, uh, like volcanic activity. And uh, volcanic activity can uh, create an aerosol cloud high up in the atmosphere that uh, reflect, reflects a portion of the radiation from the sun uh, back to space. Um, in uh, 1991 of, of June, um, in, in, in the uh, tropics, um, <coughs> there was the eruption of uh, Pinatabu, and Pinatabu, um, uh, its aerosol cloud was uh, monitored uh, with um, satellite imagery, and uh, we can see here that in this satellite, there, with the satellite data, they're measuring the transparency of the atmosphere. So dark blue colors are high transparency. Uh, when we move into yellow, orange, and red, it's low transparency. So there's the first uh, image in the uh, left-hand top corner is before the eruption. Uh, then a few days after the eruption, we can see the, the red aerosol cloud that occurred within the stratosphere. A uh, little bit later on into August and September, uh, so bottom left, uh, we can see that this layer is spread over much, much more area uh, over the Earth. And uh, the effects of this aerosol cloud uh, lasted for uh, two to three years 
uh, reducing the amount of uh, solar radiation being able to penetrate the atmosphere and be absorbed at the Earth's surface. So the final uh, image, lower right-hand corner, uh, shows uh, three years after, and we still see some some effect of this aerosol cloud reducing the uh, transparency of the atmosphere.